you please give us a, an assessment of your season so far? 2018 has been a really, really good year for me. Um, last year, I kind of had a disappointing year. I wasn't consistent at the heights that I wanted. So going into this year, I was really driven to, I really wanted to win the World Indoor Championships. And so right off the bat, starting in January, I was hitting training hard and I ended up accomplishing that goal and I won World Indoors and I also jumped 495 and that was kind of my goal was to come into this year and I wanted to be more consistent at that 490 barrier and I've accomplished that. Um, I've jumped over 495 now outdoor as well um, for 80s I've been consistent at so so I really accomplished my goal coming to, into this year of just being more consistent at those higher bars and kind of figuring out those little technical things that I was missing last season and learning from that in order to be more consistent this year. You've won silver medals in consecutive global championships 2016-2017 and then this year as you mentioned earlier you won a global gold medal indoors. What is it going to take for you to win a gold medal outdoors? What do you think you need to do to go that extra? I think I'm on the right track to, to win an outdoor gold. Um, it's going to take a lot, though, because I'm not the only one who's ready to go out and jump big bars. Um, so every time I step on the track to train, every time I step on the runway to take a jump, I have to remember that if I focus on my own performance and not pay attention to what my com competitors are doing. Focus on myself, fo focus on each jump being exactly what it is, a vault. This is something I do every single day. This is what I train for. And know that if I do what my body can and I jump the highest that I possibly can, then that will likely win um, because I believe that I have the physical ability to break the world record. and. I really believe that it comes down to, or I don't believe this, I know it comes down to who jumps the highest on that day. So if I can jump my best at the World Championships next season, that will likely win the gold. Um, but there are going to be a number of women who are ready to do that, so I have to focus on myself and execute. Now, I would like you to share with us, is it easy or difficult to compete in a non-global championship year? Um, it's really interesting to have a year without a world outdoors. Um, because we don't have a world outdoors, that's why I put a lot of pressure on world indoors for me. Because even though it's an indoor meet, it's still a chance to win a global title. So I was really happy to be able to accomplish that. Um, but this outdoor season is interesting because we don't really have that one meet we're trying to peak for, especially if you're American. The Europeans have European championships, with the, which they put a lot of pressure on, but we don't really have that. So I'm putting a lot of emphasis on the Diamond League. My goal for the year was to win indoors, world indoors, excuse me, to win the Diamond League final. And now I'm qualified for the Continental Cup. So if I go on to do two more of those things, then that'll check off everything I wanted to do this season. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to at least get one more of those things checked off, either the Diamond League final or the Continental Cup. But if I get both of those, that would be everything I wanted for the year. Now tell me, because the American trials is one of the most difficult. And obviously, what you do before and what you do after don't count. It's what you do on the day. Can you talk to us, share your experience of the American trials? You're saying the trials, right? Yes. So, yeah, so... Um, in, a, in a global, you know, when there's a World Championships or Olympics. Yeah. Um, it's funny because the Olympic trials or the, the American trials for the world team are very stressful, even though they're not nearly as competitive for people on the level like I am as it is when you get to world championships. So even though I, when I go to the trials, I may only need to jump 470 or so to make the team. Now that's changing. We have a number of, of US women who are getting better. Um, but it's not as competitive as when you step on the stage at the world championships, yet it's still more stressful because you, it's hard to not put more pressure on yourself when you are expected to do something. So expectation can really make it more nerve-wracking. So you have to kind of step away from that and realize, I've jumped these bars a lot, don't treat it like any other meat, just go out and jump as high as I can, and then just take care of my business. Now you have an unusual hobby, pets. Please talk to me, how did you get into this? Um, my passion for animals started when I was a little kid. 
um, I, I just had this fascination. It began with insects when I was really, really little. I'm talking three years old. I was in the backyard and I'd find bugs and worms and spiders. And for some reason, I just really liked them and thought they were interesting. Um, and my grandma used to buy me books about bugs and books about animals. And so my, my passion for insects as a little kid kind of grew into this love for all creatures and all animals and it's become a really really big part of who I am as a person um, and my love for animals and pets taught me to be um, caring and to show love toward living things and it's helped me as a person as well um, also just go into life just showing appreciation for life itself and I think that it's it's just been a, a big part of who I am down to my core. Would I be correct to assume that somewhere later in life you might set up a center for rescue animals? You are very correct. Um, my dream as a kid was to always be the female version of Steve Irwin. I always wanted a, an animal TV show and wanted to be holding snakes in front of the camera and telling people about, about animals. And um, I can still see that happening, especially now I've got this amazing platform um, that I've developed because I've, I've been blessed to become the athlete that I am. And so now I've got this awesome opportunity to take who I am now and, and the accolades I've gotten and, and get into maybe the TV world. And, and if I had an animal TV show, then I could start a sanctuary for animals. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. Back to track and field. Now, most people know how other athletes train for their disciplines in track and field. Please share with us, how do you train for pole vaulting? The easiest way for me to describe how pole vaulters train is it's a mixture between being a sprinter and being a gymnast. Um, so some days we have sprint workouts and we're very focused on our approach, on our run, on being fast and powerful, but you also want to be nimble and you want to be light and you want to be poppy and bouncy and, and you want to have good body awareness. So we do a lot of mix between sprinting workouts and also things to help our body awareness and our technique. So high bar workouts, workouts on the rings, rope stuff, things to keep us really strong like a gymnast. Thank you very much for your time and all the best going forward. Thank you.